Hello folks, this is Echo. Welcome to Horde Base Breakdown. In this series, I show you new Horde Base designs, teach you how to build them, toss a Horde at them, and then judge them. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through the tower. This base was inspired by some of the new blocks we got access to in Alpha 20. Specifically, this is the first time that we can actually build rounded structures. This base is set up to be primarily a Horde Base, though could double as your crafting and storage areas as necessary. As part of the tutorial for this, I'll be walking you through the new multi-block structures available in Alpha 20 and teach you how to use them. I fully recognize that with the 1300 plus blocks that we now have in Alpha 20, the building can become very daunting. In addition to teaching you how to build this new base, I'm hoping that I also give you a better insight into the menu structure in Alpha 20, as well as some new blocks that you can play with. With that, let's jump right on into the construction of the tower. First, you're going to want to find a nice flat space, about 9 by 20 blocks. And then you're going to want to get together some materials here real quick. So to start off with, you're going to need about 4,000 wood and about 500 cobblestone blocks. And you're going to take that wood and either make right around 400 cubes, uh, wood cubes, or you can make the frames either way. And these frames work just like they did in Alpha 19 and that you place them down and you can pick them up. The wood cube, on the other hand, once you place it, you're going to have to break it apart to get rid of it. So I highly recommend using the frames when you're building because that will allow you to not only fix any mistakes you made in the fly without losing resources, but also you will get XP for all the upgrades. But that being said, I'm going to go with these wood blocks because I'm familiar with this build. First, we're going to start with a stair. It's just a five high stair, so it's pretty straightforward. Oh, we missed the very top. And then once we have that, we're going to move to the center to create the, the rounded structure in the middle. Now, to get this set up, we're going to do something to make our lives a little bit easier. I highly recommend this. So we're going to take this and break this into five stacks of, you know, roughly the same size. And then for each one of these, we're going to reconfigure it to be a specific shape. Now, the way this works, if you come into shapes here, click on the round tab on the side and then come up here and go 7M. So this is going to bring up the seven meter variant of the round circle structures. There's also five meter and three meter var variants of this. So across the top, the first thing that you'll see is the filled in cube version that goes one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to replicate these down into these positions here so that we can go in order as we're building. So we'll just click on this and hit escape and then we'll scroll to the next one and so on. All right, now that we have all of those set up, we're gonna do a circle around so you get an idea of how it builds out. And then we're gonna build the first set of walls around up to five high. So you're gonna to wanna to take the one that's split in the middle and you're gonna rotate it until you can see those two little open spaces on the left and right. We're gonna place that one. Then we're gonna to move to the right. We're gonna to go to the next shape here and then rotate it till it matches. And then we're gonna keep going. And each time it's about three rotations. Now when you get to the end of this, we're gonna scroll back to the first one. And then we're just gonna keep going all the way around. So there's the basic pattern. Now we're just going to take this and build it up five high. We'll be back here in a second after we're done with that. So now we've got all four sides up to five blocks high, and you can fill all this in if you have all the materials to do it, but I'm just going to do the top section of this. Uh, I'm going to take another one of these and split it off, and I'm going to change this back into a regular square shape. We're going to come back under here, remove the 7M, and click on the square. And we're just going to fill all of this in now. Up. 
So we're going to actually split this yet again here. That way we just keep all of our shapes in case we mess anything up. And we're going to come to this, hold down R in the shape menu. We're going to come to the top here into the search menu and type in pull. And we're going to pull this centered version here. We're going to hit advanced rotation so that we can flip it any way we want. And right up here, we're going to rotate it until it is in the center and at the top. Oh, we went right past it. There we go. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and that'll connect up there. So now we've got a pathway in and out of the base. And while we're here, we're going to actually rotate this around to do the top section so that this is too thick. I didn't mean to put one there. Get rid of that. And we're going to stop short of doing this last one, and I'll show you why in a second. And then back here to make this even and make the zombies come up a little bit easier, we're going to go here and we're going to use type in Gable and take that off. Not, not Gamble. You've got to do Gable. There we go. And then there's this Gable Wedge 60 block, which is really nice. That lets it ease in. And now we're going to start building up the interior structure here. So we've still got all these blocks pulled up. So we're going to rotate and create the doorway here. And we're going to go up four. Did I do that right? I did that wrong. That one is going to go over on this side. So go one, two, three, four. Get rid of that one. And this one needs to be this one. There we go. And one, two, three, four. And now before we go any further, we can create the essential fighting position here. Let's rotate this. All right, so we've got that set there. So we're gonna go here and here. And then to fill this spot in here, we're gonna go back and reuse this block. And we're gonna search up pole again. And you've got this pole here called pole side centered T four way. We're going to use that one. We're going to put advanced rotation on again. We're going to rotate till that fits nicely in facing that way and sits flush up against there. Okay. Then we're going to change this back to a regular pole. I should have just left one of these earlier, except for this time, it's going to be the one in the corner. So I guess I couldn't have left it. We're going to pull up this one. We're going to go back to advanced rotation again. And we're going to flip this around. And this is where we get a lot of extra protection. So we're going to set one there. We're going to set one on the outside. I can't get through there. I might have to circle around. One there. And I'm going to cheat and fly here for a second. And then you're going to put one on that top section right there. Additionally, up to you, you can put some additional um, edging around this that makes it look really nice. The one that I like to use is the window trim. So again, in shapes, you can go to window trim and you're gonna pull this one right here. And this will sit against the side and this adds kind of the benefit of giving you some extra protection, especially once you upgrade it and whatnot. Uh, we're gonna switch that to advanced rotation. And then the other thing to just top it off and give it a nice aesthetic to it is you can go in, there's this great arc shape that I really have enjoyed using right here, this window arc top trim, and you can toss that right over the top. So that gives you a nice entrance way in. And now we're done with the defensive position. You just come back in here and we're just going to finish off putting the walls. So take these pieces here again, and we're going to go five high. That one's going to go on this side. Yep. Or four high. One, two, three, four. And we need the other one for the other side. One, two, three, and four. All right. Next, we're just going to replicate the walls on this side and this side, just like we did before. So we'll come back in a minute and have those done. 
So now we have three walls. We've got the left and the right here in the center fighting position. We're gonna duplicate this same wall here with the hole missing in the backside so that we can create a door to come in. So with that, we'll follow the same pattern we did before. All right, so now that we've got this section here filled in, we can craft ourselves a quick door to place in the back. rotate that around to the back side and then I forgot two pieces in the front that we wanted to do so we're going to take out this part and this part and then we're going to come back into this piece here we're going to fill these in with bars but this is a curved space so you're going to need something a little bit different so we're going to come back to the rounded section we're going to go to 5m and they make these really cool rails um, but they're called catwalks. So you're going to look for 5M round catwalk three and four. So we'll do three first and then we'll wedge it in. And then we're going to do four. So again, go back in your shape menu and grab four and rotate it in. And that's going to give you two additional fighting positions. And while we're here, we're also going to go ahead and build a quick hatch. And when I do the Horde Knight, you'll see how the hatch kind of helps you out, makes things a little bit easier. But you're gonna wanna rotate that hatch like that so the handlebar is facing back towards you. That way you flip it up, it blocks that doorway. If they happen to break through those blocks, you have a second line of defense if you needed it. All right, so at this stage, all we need is the roof. I wanna do it with some interesting character though. So there's two little tricks we're gonna play with this. The first is that we're gonna use kind of a weird piece in a way that it's not meant to. So we're gonna type 3M and pull up this 3M tunnel inside corner. Um, Cause I think it's got just some really great character to it. We're gonna advance, rotate it. And we're gonna use this to create corners in the room to give some depth. So we'll put one there, one there, one there, one there, okay. And then once we're done with that, the next thing that we're gonna do here we're going to change this and we're going to make this into a ladder because you can make ladders out of everything now. Take off the rounded and just use a regular old ladder. And this is going to give us a way to get up onto the roof. And then we're going to go out the back door and we're also going to put ladders on the back here. Want to go two up so our zombie friends can't come hang out with us unless we want them to. And we'll climb back up here close this up and then we're going to take this ladder and we're going to change it one last time this time we're going to change this into a plate now you don't have to do this your ceiling can be straight wood um, blocks if you want it to but i like to have a higher ceiling it makes my my space feel a little bit more open so you're going to rotate this and if you're new to seven days to die <laughs> if you're new to seven days to die these plates um, have the same health as a full block. So don't think you're selling yourself short by not putting actual blocks up there. So there's the full build. The only thing that we need here uh, that I didn't put before is to grab us some torches. So I'm gonna use cheat menu here and grab some torches. We'll throw one up on the top there. And then we'll come up to the top of the base here and we just need to put a hatch, one more hatch, which we conveniently have this one here. We'll put it on top and voila, we have a base. The only thing we're missing at this point in time are the crenellations that you can see across the top. They don't serve any function, but they do give your little tower base a little bit better of an aesthetic for you to go out and fight the horde. So for this, we're gonna push all these back to the top. We're done with all these. They're all just gonna recombine into one piece. We're going to put them back down here and break them this time into another five. And we're going to go through each one. And instead of, we're going to go back to the rounded menu in here. So round, go 7M. And so these are the filled in blocks. There's also the open blocks like this that are also going to have round one, two. So that's going to say quarter seven meter round one, two, three, four, etc. So we're gonna do the same kind of system we did before. 
we're going to rotate to the next one. One, two, and five. Now, the sixth one is also used. If we were going to fill these in, you would use that one. In this case, we're not going to because uh, we're just using this, honestly, to, you know, add some aesthetic to the base. So we're going to start up here at the front. We're going to put one there. And then we'll start going around. We're actually going to skip two, though, because of how we're doing this, which I guess puts me back to here because I'm going the other way. Yep. So skip one space, come to the edge. It's going to be this one. And from here, we'll just continue to carry the same pattern all the way around the circle. Two, and there's our final one. All right. So now if we look at the front, come up here, we can slap one torch on the top and we have ourselves a base. So the only thing left to do from here is to do some upgrades, which I highly recommend. And that's why I had the cobblestone. So you're always gonna wanna do the stairs and at least do the top section of this hole. And likewise, your fighting position here, as much as you can afford to do, this area around here is the area that's gonna take the most damage. So I highly recommend coming through and updating this to give yourself some strength. I might do the windows too. It shouldn't matter for the first horde night, but moving forward, it would. Lastly, again, I just do a loop around the base and upgrade all that to cobble. And at this point in time, I think we're ready to toss a seven day horde at this sucker and see how it holds up. In terms of settings, we have survivalist difficulty with 32 zombie count, game stage 21 and just level 12 and all the associated gear that I can build given the skills that I've purchased. In terms of armor, I'm rocking that sweet plant fiber. So straight out of the gate, you can see that our zombie friends are pathing perfectly right up that walkway and straight across to where I'm hanging out. Likewise, we got these bars in front of us that easily manage them and keep them away. So for this Horde Knight fight, I spec a little bit into the bow as well. I don't know if you've gotten the chance to play with it in Alpha 20, but man, it feels good. After so long of Alpha 19 of it being just complete garbage, it's finally got a place of its own and can really hold up. So again, you can see they kind of run and they stack up. The moment there's more than one of them, they just fall right off the edge there and then they just loop back around. So again, this is a pretty common base structure that we've got laid out here. The big difference is really just the circular pattern leveraging the new parts and pieces that we got with Alpha 20. But we could do this all day long. I probably could have cranked the difficulty up to insane. We'll pause here and just do a little bit of repairs. But everything's in pretty decent shape. But plenty of time to fix our weapons and go back to town just taking heads off. Overall, I feel like Alpha 20 has made this game a lot harder. Other than the Horde Knights, the Horde Knights so far, we seem to be doing pretty well with, especially the first three or four. Once you start getting up to the bigger zombies, they do get a bit tougher. I think on my community server right now, we are right around day 60 or 70, and they're definitely starting to bring a little bit more of the pain. But for a day seven horde, this base will more than handle everything that you got coming at you. Even I think an insane, you wouldn't have a, even the slightest problem. And you've got also got those two areas to the side that if you had a couple teammates, they could pile in here and be shooting from the side while you had one person primary melee in the center. But this is pretty much a game over right here. So I just sped it up. This is one of the earliest horde nights I've had in a while. Come 12.30, we were basically at the end of things. One of the unintentional designs I had here, that keyhole at the bottom allows you to flip open the trap door and shoot through to the bottom of the stairs, which is really nice. So that is it. So let's check on the base and see how things are doing and go through the ratings. 
So from a fun factor, I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 10. It's kind of boring. You just kind of sit back. The zombies run at you. You smack them in the face. You shoot them in the face and they die. So not a lot of interesting mechanics and whatnot that you use with this base. But I will say that the next item survivability, I'm going to give a 10 out of 10. And I'm judging this as a day seven horde base because I didn't take a single point of damage the entire time. I was at no risk whatsoever. Next on the list, we're going to go with maintenance and we're going to go with eight out of 10 on this one. As you can see me going around and just fixing things up a little bit, we're in pretty solid shape and I could probably repair all, everything here within, you know, less than five minutes and be ready for the next horde night. So next on the list, let's talk multiplayer. I give it a five out of 10 because you could fit one other buddy in there, maybe two. And after that, it would be really tight and you wouldn't really be able to work much. So the last one on here that I have is going to be expandability. This one, I'm going to give it a five out of 10 because there are some ways to expand it. But as you're about to see, it's a little bit tricky. You got to go up and you got to potentially tie multiple towers together. So here is the first glimpse of my new base called Frosthaven. I'll be unveiling this in full later this week. So if you want to stick around, subscribe, toss a like, I'd muchly appreciate it. And I will be showing you this one in greater detail along with a multiplayer horde battle. So that's all for today's video. If you have any questions or thoughts, drop them down in the comments and I'm happy to engage with you. Also feel free to drop on to my discord and ask questions there or come in and join in our community server. Take care all and have a fantastic day. Echoes out.